It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Perfect. Sold. Behind the wheel of a classic car. Lovely day for it. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Every home should have one of these. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. <laughs> There'll be worthy winners. Nine fifty. You're gonna make a thousand pounds. And valiant losers. No! Will it be the high road to glory? You make me a big profit. Or a slow road to disaster. Are we stuck? This is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. <laughs> Ciao, Bella. We're going south. Hertfordshire beckons. And we are almost parallel to the M11. You've looked that up. You don't have a wind Charles, you don't have that kind of sense of direction. Not quite. <laughs> Girl, you really got me going. It's the final leg with auctioneers Charles Hanson, the human compass from Derbyshire, really and Glasgow gal Natasha Raskin Sharp. I think one day you and I could ride two Shire horses on oh, a car. Look at them! Hey, Shire horses, what do you think about it? Oh, they're gorgeous. Oh. Hi. I could have a mare, you could have um, a donkey. Cheeky. <laughs> Our antiques hot shots are burning rubber in the 1932 Riley Monaco. She's a beaut. It's the oldest automobile to ever feature on road trip and it was manufactured at a time before seat belts were mandatory. Have you ever been horse riding? Yes, I used to ride. No, I used to you ride. didn't. Really? I, used to ride. I did. In all the gears? Yes. John Purse. Yes. Good Lord. I thought I could be like Darcy, you know, from that film. You've never put me in mind of Mr Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. Last time, despite Charles being in tip-top shape, his wallet was in good shape too. With over a thousand pounds to spend. What's the absolute best price? 200. I'll take it. And Tasha also had a splurge. It's stunning. It's exactly what you want it to be. The Liberty Tudric plate gave Tasha yes! her first auction win. Yes! 220! That's unbelievable! I will never look at Liberty and Archibald Knox in the same way now after no. that amazing result. And seriously, hey Riley, hats off to. Natasha. Finally. Natasha started this trip with 200 and has built that to a kitty stuffed with 326 pounds and 36 pennies. Well done. Charles also began with 200 pounds and despite a chunky loss last time, he's still minted. He has 1,272 pounds and 78 pennies. Wow. This, in antique terms, has been the Wall Street crash. Bit dramatic, that. <laughs> Their tour began in Northumberland and Newcastle, but today this antiques jig continues the dance to Hertfordshire for the final showdown in Hatfield. I intend to spend the entire budget no, left over. No, 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 no. I'm going for it, Tasha. How exciting. Good man. Our road trippers are in Hertfordshire, shopping all the way to Hemel, Hempstead, First stop, Royston, home to Wheeler Antiques. Could you get any closer to that furniture? I might go for a boogie first. No, jazz hands. Get the basics down. Jazz hands, oh, they're very good. Step ball change. That's a lunge. Yeah, I think you need some training. Stop messing about. Let's get in. <laughs> a family-run biz, this emporium stocks everything from silver to ceramics and military to fine art. And a lot besides. Ooh la la. Bit big, that, I'd say. But that is perfect! So you, Charles. <laughs> She's quite interesting, this young, fed-up looking lady. She looks like she's had enough. One thing I particularly like is the colour palette. Actually, actually, completely complementing my outfit, by the by. A nice kind of duck egg blue and brown. OK, so this matches what I'm wearing, I like. This has a bit of age to it. I'm going to say it's probably 18, 19, 19, 10, that kind of period. She has got lovely blue eyes. They're complemented in her headdress and in the wash lines, but she does look grumpy. Don't worry about it. They often do. Must be the corset. Ticket price £30. Now, where's Charles? I'm in heaven. 
otherwise known as the shop storeroom. It's everywhere, honestly. The proverbial pig in muck, eh? Can you hear the noise? It's not my... <laughs> it's a jangling of the pots beside me. It's... This is the storeroom, so I must be very, very careful. Yeah. Breakables and a Zebedee Hansen do not mix. <laughs> One thing I love is 18th century wine glasses, and in style, on this shelf here, you've got what appear to be reproduction glasses. The one which is genuine, I'm fairly sure, without handling it, is this one here. Great, and the weight's fantastic. I love this. Then what sets this glass off is this wonderful faceted stem. And this stem, in style, is around 1760. And the foot of the wine glass, for it to be 18th century, must always be wider in diameter than the bucket-shaped bowl, and this is. I'm going to say to you, cheers, 1760. It's unpriced, but a definite possible. I like it. This, Natasha, is a noise from 1915. Amazing, isn't it? It's, it's not like you to come into an antique shop and make a racket. Have you broken it yet? No. Have you found the big one yet? Have I found the big one? I found a wee one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get cracking. Come on. Get cracking. Right, go on. Walk off. Walk off with the soundtrack. <laughs> so much for your peace and quiet, eh, Tash? It's quite nice. I'm not really a poodle man, but it's got a sweet face. It's really heavy. So I'm looking for a hallmark just to see if this poodle really is a fancy one. And I reckon that's 1970, so it's a really wonderful... Victorian-style silver poodle, but made by, it appears to be, one of the most important manufacturers of silver in Barnard. Barnard and Sons were a firm of British silversmiths that created the lily font for the christening of the British royal family, starting with Queen Victoria's eldest child in 1841. Isn't that nice? Mental note, doggy, fetch, stay. Stay. The prize pooch doesn't have a price. Another one for the maybe stash. Hi, Tash. Rhymes with stash. <laughs> That's quite sweet, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure if these are a set. I mean, naturally, the shape is almost identical, just smaller and larger. The reason they are this really slender cuboid shape is because they slot in to a nice large box. I think I've seen these fitted out in a beautiful mahogany box. I think there probably would have been six, maybe eight of these. There might have been some glasses to match. There is always a good market for Georgian glass, at least for the best pieces. This could be a wise move, Tasha, but they don't have a price. What's the man with the loaded wallet doing? Good Lord, watch out! I was caught by the light in this room. The light is just shimmering what appear to be a nice bezel or outer rim of diamonds. Blimey, Charlie! Crikey! What I've got here, I think, is a lady's wristwatch. Looking at the Arabic numerals, I suspect it must be 1920s. Surrounded by a bezel, of diamonds. Hey, maybe we should call you double O, Chazza. It's a good continental diamond surround 18 karat white gold wristwatch. This is the ultimate cocktail watch. It's stunning. And another one without a price. Now, Natasha has plenty in her purse too. What a place. A titch over £325. I really like this. It's a silver-mounted calendar, desktop calendar. We all need to know the date. Now we all just look at our phones, let's be honest. But in the early 20th century, this would have been a really nice gift for somebody who'd maybe given a company good service for 20 years. And if we've said it once, we've said it a million times, there's nothing more joyful than a vacant cartouche. Because if you want to gift this to the person in your life who would enjoy a desktop calendar, you can engrave their name in there. I'm priced too. 
as are the two Georgian glass decanters. Let's kick off with the Victorian ink and wash drawing. Stand by, Miles. She is priced up at £30, mm -hmm. so I'm digging her. Then there is this engine turned silver desktop calendar. £20 that one I can do you for. Oh, right, OK, straight in. Miles, I like it. Thank you very much. No problem. And then a mismatching pair of decanters, Georgian, late Georgian, gilt decoration. I'll do 50 for the two of them. A total sum of £100. Wow. It's a tonne. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Miles, I am really grateful. Thanks ever so much. Perfect, thank okay. you. OK. Yeah, thanks, Miles. Thank you, bye-bye, bye. Natasha now has just over £225. We'll catch up with her later. Back inside, how's the man getting on with the pots of cash? So I've come downstairs with this big box of assorted silver. I hope that maybe I could buy it as one lot. There is a load of stuff in here. It's becoming the handsome loot. The Hanson Hertfordshire Silver Hoard. It's not a bad lot, this. There's a lot here. Look, I don't believe it. This napkin ring is inscribed CH. It's a sign. Calvin Harris. <laughs> Basically, it's Edwardian George V silver. Nothing's Victorian, nothing's early. And nothing is priced. Charles needs a trolley for the silver poodle, the 18 karat gold and diamond ladies' watch, and of course, a big box of silver. Stand by, Miles. We're kicking off with the wine glass, and this could be tough. How much could that be? That's £100 on that one for you. £100, OK. And the sparkling diamond ladies' watch? I'll do 120 quid on that one for you. And that's f fine, so that, that, that's 220 OK, we're adding up here, I'm adding up. <laughs> Are you a poodle man? I'm not. I've got bulldogs, British bulldogs. <laughs> Good man. So, you might want to see the poodle go. How much is that? 500. <sighs> Cocker poodle do! Wow. So, all in so far, we're talking 220 plus 500 is 720. There's one more thing I've seen. How about that sucking great box of silver, Miles? I'll do 300 pounds on it for you. An epic total of £1,020. He's going for it. I'll tell you what I do, though. 900 quid. Are you being serious? That's it, yeah. It will be my biggest ever spend in one shop over 13 years. Do you know what? Hold on. <laughs> for like it's cash at dawn. What I've got here is £900. <laughs> Sold. Four lots. There is £900. Thanks for the memories. Wow, we the Hanson hoard breaks down to four hundred pounds for the silver poodle, one hundred pounds for the eighteenth-century wine glass, three hundred pounds for the big box of silver, and one hundred for the gold and diamond ladies' watch. Now he said he was going to go for it, and by jingo, he has, leaving him with just over three hundred and seventy pounds. What the day? Meanwhile, Natasha is going underground. She's heard there's a hidden delight in the town of Ware. And down this unassuming street of 1960s suburbia lies remnants of a Georgian gem built by a Quaker poet. Warden Robert Owen can tell all to Tasha. Look at this. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've just walked through a housing estate. Is it a mystery? What do you know about it? It was a well-known feature. John Scott built it in his garden, but the idea was to attract visitors to come and visit him because he'd moved down from London. John Scott of Amwell was an 18th-century poet. This grotto, a series of underground chambers, was built for him in 1760. He was more of an artist, and he involved himself in actually converting the estate to a Rococo garden and built this grotto at the bottom. Grottos started becoming popular in 1624, when James I had a shell grotto made in his drinking den beneath Whitehall. And I can't wait to see what lies behind that door. Although grottos were commonplace at the time, this one is thought to be one of the finest remaining in England. Now I know why I need the lantern. The caves venture down 67 feet into the hillside, with six interconnected chambers. 
Amazing. Quite simple shells. I'm sure there are shells from all over the world here, but we're starting off with scallop shells. Oh, but then look, I didn't even notice that. There's the pearl oyster up there, and then these huge conches. In the mid 18th century, the Rococo style was inspired by the auricular swirling patterns of shells and applied to design everywhere. Shell decoration in grottos became particularly de rigueur. Oh, look at this. This is very sweet. I'm going to sit down because it seems these are chairs, these alcoves. Oh, do you know something? It's quite different, actually, when you sit down. It's entirely different from down here. It's believed the grotto took 30 years to complete. Or to explore. At a cost of £10,000. Today, that's the equivalent of about two million. The pattern's really simple. You have the lime mortar is basically the canvas. Then you have the lustrous orner and pearl oyster shells. But the way that they're interwoven with the flint, just creating this really lovely, really effective lattice work. Oh, I could look at that for hours. Oh, this is my favourite one thus far. But this wasn't just a fancy showpiece. As a Quaker, it's thought that John created this grotto to give over three decades' worth of employment to the people of Ware. Hi, Bob, I can see you. <laughs> oh, great. You didn't get lost then. <laughs> ah, don't need this anymore. <laughs> this is quite dizzying compared to some of the other chambers, I would say. The grotto was threatened in the 1960s when a housing estate was built here, but it was fortunately saved from the bulldozers. It would have been a lovely setting, a, a grotto on a hill looking out over the river valley. Today, Scott's Grotto Trust now preserve John Scott's 260-year-old creation as a timely reminder of the landscape designs of the quirky Georgian. Thank goodness. Speaking of quirky... This is our last rags to riches story. You and I, it's like turning you, Riley, into a Rolls Royce. That's what we can do together, Riley. Agreed? <coughs> Good man. Let's do it. With dizzy determination, Charles and Riley are headed to Hartford, the home of the UK's largest toothbrush collection. But today, our chum with a grin is going in here. A fine establishment with over two floors of hand-picked goodies. <laughs> That's more like it. What do you think? I'm almost, I'm almost on safari. What an imagination. Mushrooms, anyone? Despite spending a huge chunk earlier, Charles still has over £370 to spend. Imagine the great nurseries back in the 1920s, 30s. What? Many homeowners of a certain, I suppose, disposable income wanted was a Collinson rocking horse. As one of the longest established rocking horse makers, Collinson can trace its roots right back to Liverpool in 1836. This one probably is 1930s. I love it. And is it in working order? G up, we're at the races. Careful. There's one more auction to go. She's catching me up. But she's about four furloughs behind. Come on, Hanson. And the finishing line is almost in sight. Well done. Take me home. Not priced. These are really popular. It's a bit shabby. You'll see the saddle is a bit tired. Lost some stirrups. A bit of a crack here that concerns me in this little plaster. But with a slow trot and the gentle canter, it could be for me. Let's saddle up for a deal with Earl. Our man in charge. What would be the price on the rocking horse? 95. Really? What I'm going to do, Earl, uh, is grab the reins, probably kick on, take a seat, I'm in my saddle, and I'll take the rocking horse at 95 pounds. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Sold. There's 95 pounds with a trot or a canter. I'll say cheerio. Yeah, let's see how it runs on auction turf. Charles now has 277 pounds and pennies. You and I are sufficiently friendly that we could just keep going, couldn't we? We could keep going. I've got five seconds here. <laughs> Nighty night.
Wakey, wakey! The Hertfordshire tour continues. Here we go, big bum. Oh! <laughs> Charming. You've been in fine fettle this whole trip. I just don't know what I'm going to do without it. Get out of here. What am I going to do without my buddy? Oh! Seriously, it has been a lovely week. Oh, thank I've just been myself around you, so thank you. Oh, thank you too. What a lovely time. Oh, Charles. We're so cheesy. <laughs> that is true, but it's not over yet, you two. Yesterday, busy bee Natasha collected the Victorian ink and wash painting, the Georgian glass decanters, and the George V silver desktop calendar. There's nothing more joyful than a vacant cartouche. Leaving her with a smidge over £225. On to the next one. While gung ho Hanson was wildly spending. He picked up an 18th century wine glass, a silver poodle, an 18 karat gold and diamond ladies watch, and a weighty box of silver and a very reasonable rocking horse, as you do. Gee up, we're at the races. All that lot nearly tipped a grand, leaving Charles with just under £280. Thank you very much. Have a little look at your feet. I brought one of my purchases with me. What do you think? Do you know, I may have missed that. Do you know, it looks a bit like maybe you after last night's meal. Oh, Just stop. sitting back. Stop. After. Enough said. <laughs> Today, their final gallop continues in Hertfordshire. With Charles dropped off elsewhere, Natasha is Hertford bound. Back in the 16th century, London's Parliament briefly moved here to escape the Great Plague. But today, it's Natasha on the run from Charles as she shops on her own some. But what is she going to find in this fine emporium? Natasha has just over £226 remaining. Well, I'm not a smoker, but I know that this is a tobacco jar and I also know it's going to be really heavy, so... Let's test the theory. Yeah, it's so heavy, it's made of lead. What I do know is that collectors like to buy these tobacco jars with the lid that presses it down. This is George III. It's lovely. I particularly like these stylized dolphins because they look nothing like dolphins. That's why I like them the most. I'm feeling a little bit interested in this. I'm also feeling a bit sore in the biceps because it's really heavy. But if it were light, I'd be worried. It has to be heavy to be right. £49 is the price. I'm not scared of that. I'm glad. Look, there's the man in charge, Mark, otherwise known as TikTok. I found the lovely lead tobacco press. Oh, right, uh, The yes. Georgian one. Yeah. So what would be your best price? Um, my very best price I can do it for, um, I could do it for £40. Fantastic. That sounds OK. It sounds fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I'll pop that down for you, Mark. And I will say thank you very much. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. You're a living legend. <laughs> See you again. See you then. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. That neat little buy leaves Natasha with £186 and loose change. <laughs> Meanwhile, Charles has trotted off to Waddeston in Aylesbury. Within the village lies the magnificent, chateau-esque splendour of Waddeston Manor, home of Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild, one of the greatest collectors of fine art in the world. This Victorian gentleman's eye for beauty and collecting extended to the precious natural world. Curator Ian Edmonds can tell all to an excitable Charles. Ian, it's amazing. You come to some places <laughs> and it takes your breath away. It really does. What an amazing landscape this house is. It was built in 1874 to uh, 1885, uh, and it was here as a summer retreat uh, away from the hustle and bustle of, of London. A member of the Rothschild banking family, Baron Ferdinand would hold many a glitzy party at his 16th century style chateau. But within the grounds, he created something truly magnificent. Ian, the house is amazing, but why am I here? What am I seeing today? Today, Charles, we're going to have a look at some amazing birds. Birds in porcelain? <laughs> no, with feathers. Real birds? Yes. I thought they all these. Sounds interesting. 
In the late 19th century, the Victorians were obsessed with the natural world. A magnificent aviary filled with songbirds was the ultimate display of wealth. This is an aviary? This, this is an aviary. Ian, to me, it's a palace. Uh, it, it's a palace for the birds. It, I can't it's beautiful. believe it. It's like a mini Versailles. <laughs> I'm sure inspired Look at the gilding. That. Spot on, Charles. This cast iron structure, built in 1889, echoes the trellis work pavilions designed for the gardens of Versailles. This beautiful building, to, to my eyes, looks a great neo-rococo masterpiece. I'm hearing wonderful sounds. Is that a dog? No, no, it's a, a, a turaco just Excuse behind me? me. A turaco. What's that? It's an African species of bird, a fruit-eating um, bird. The aviary here was built uh, by Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild, and it reminded him of his childhood home. He had an aviary just like this in Frankfurt. His sister also built an aviary in Geneva, so there were three aviaries in this similar style. But this is the only aviary that stands today uh, like this. In the United Kingdom? In, in Europe. Wow. Taking around eight years to complete, the aviary was a triumph of architectural design. In the Victorian era, it was a love affair of birds. Birds are beautiful, they have a beautiful song, and beauty was really cherished, and this aviary was really almost created just to frame that beauty. It must have been in quite a spectacle. First impressions, not just seeing, but also hearing. Many years after the Baron had passed away, the aviary fell into disrepair, but was brought back to life in the late 1950s when the National Trust took over. Today, the aviary is an important place for conservation and protection. There are around 170 birds here from 45 different species. I can hear them. I can't really see them yet. Any chance of seeing a few birds? Let's go see the birds. Within the aviary, one-third of the birds here are at risk of extinction. Attenborough, eat your heart out. So within this aviary, Ian, these noises, what birds have we got in here? Uh, in here we've got uh, our rarest species is the blue-crowned laughing thrush. They're critically endangered, uh, uh, with a world population of around about 500 individuals. What are you having to achieve? Is there a conservation plan? Th there is. We, we, we have to cooperate with collections across the world. We're looking at breeding programmes, we're, we're looking at the populations uh, as a whole, and we really have to work together to ensure that those populations stay genetically diverse to help us safeguard and uh, many of these species. Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild's love for beautiful and rare birds lives on today. The 19th century Rococo style aviary is home to a very modern collection of birds that Ian and his colleagues are helping to nurture and save from extinction. Now, where's our very own chick? Or should I say chic? One more to go. Come on, Hertfordshire. Don't let me down. Final shot. Let's make it a good one. Come on, Tash. Give Charles a run for his money. Natasha has journeyed to Hemel Hempstead. Well, excuse me. <laughs> Not all antique shops look like this. Right, here lies one of the biggest antiques venues in the UK. And what a setting, are you kidding? Bushwood Antiques is a veritable city of antiques. There's thousands of pieces in two showrooms in an arena-sized warehouse. I'm looking. I'm not seeing prices, which usually means price on application, which means expensive. Yikes. With just over £186, what will Tasha find in this vast ocean of antiques? <laughs> that reminds me, the best thing ever about working in an auction house, when you have a general sale, you have all the different items come in, but invariably you'll have lots of Cheers. This reminds me of doing an auction. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you lot 100, a Georgian tobacco jar fitted with interior lid. 300 now, thank you so much, madam. 320, 340, 360, 380, are you out? Sold for £400, thank you so much, very generous. OK, Mrs Auctioneer. Look, a little lizard. Gosh, that's gorgeous. 
So bronze is known for its ability to take a cast, to make its way into every single crevice of that cast to give the most faithful rendition, reproduction, of the artist's original intent. It's, it's actually quite breathtaking. There's so much detail. I cannot believe how lifelike that is. Well, do you know there is a mark, actually? G. Nassini, Roma. Nassini was a favoured foundry in Rome. Giovanni Nassini's foundry operated in the late 19th and early 20th century. The foundry's furnaces produced some of the finest sculptures of the day. Oh, I'm quite excited. Oh, guess what? Guess what? There's no prize. I think this is the item of all the items I've seen on which I want to take a punt. I'm completely in love with it. I have less than 200 pounds and I don't know if that's going to buy it. It's such a spectacular piece of bronze. Looks expensive. Looks like you'd better speak nicely to Julie. I've fallen for a beautiful bronze. I think you're going to know exactly the one because it's so unusual. It's mounted by a lizard. Oh, yes. You I know do the one? Know that one. I do, yes. This is my last chance saloon. Right. I have 186 pounds burning a hole in my pocket. Julie, I'm all in if you're all in. Well, it is actually priced at a bit more than that. Uh, so, as you like it so much, I will. We'll do a deal. Are you sure at 186? Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. I'm yeah. so grateful, Julie. Thank you so much. What a way to finish things off. Yes, well, I'm glad you found what you, need, what you wanted. How very generous, Julie. With that bold buy, Natasha has just 36p left. <laughs> I feel like this trip has done nothing but cement our friendship. 100%. It's and been so lovely. It has honestly flown by. Yeah. And I cannot believe the end is nigh. Shut eye for you two first. With breathless anticipation, <laughs> our pair are limbering up for a tablet-sized view of their auction finale at Mill Green Museum and Mill. Oh, oh, is this us? This is it. This, this is, is the oh, water mill. mill. The water mill. I green. love a mill. We're here. Look. This is lovely. This, this is queen. We're going back in time. Dating back to the 17th century, this working water mill is on a site that's been a place of milling for over 1,000 years. Our road trip pals have zoomed around Hertfordshire and just don't want to leave. They're still here, in Hatfield, while their antiques have been sent to Bourne End in Buckinghamshire, to Bourne End auction rooms, for sale on the phone and the World Wide Web. Today's chief gavel basher is Hugo Lemon. Charles snapped up five items for a whopping sum of £995. Thoughts, please, Hugo? The cocktail watch, this one is quite a good size, looks really good with the diamonds on there, turn up at auction quite often and always do quite well. With just pennies left, Natasha spent £326 also on five lots. What's your fave, Hugo? The bronze vase, beautifully cast. The lizard on the outside, really, really well done. I think someone who likes bronzes or Italian wear, I think will really take a shine to this today. Back to Mill Green Museum and Mill for a watch on our trusty tablets. Mind your head, Charles. Yes. Honestly, this is not a place for the tall. No, exactly, and just don't... Uh... Don't have a leak, OK? That's not well. Don't have In the a water leak. mill. <laughs> I'm nervous. What an amazing building, isn't it, first of all? It is amazing. A working water mill. There might be tears today. Do you reckon? There might be tears. <laughs> the week now is almost over. Right, hold on. Here we, we go. we turn the wheel? First up is Natasha's Victorian ink and wash drawing. £50 to start. Oh, go Study. On. 30 then. That's no, more like it. No, no, that's what I paid. 30, I'm bid, thank you. Here we go, Natasha. 32, 35, 35, 37, 37 and 40, 40 and 2. Oh, no, oh moving. she's moving, she's moving. 47 and 50. Oh, Tasha. 47 she's waking up. £47. And then at £47 on commission at 47. Sold it. That's it's all right. Fine number, lucky seven. That's a sign, it's an omen. Oh. The grumpy girl did you proud, Natasha. 
Can I just say something? Our auctioneer is quite dashing. Uh, well, yes, he is. <laughs> is this yes. dashing gentleman selling our wares? Now, don't get jealous, Charles. <laughs> Next, it's the Golden Diamond Ladies wristwatch from Charles. Stop me at £200. Get out of here. 150 if it helps. Oh, please. 150 I'm bid. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes! Thank you very much. Now is the time. Now £150. Pounds. I'm sure you all done a one bit. But I'm very happy. Good. Good profit. Thank you very much. An excellent start. <laughs> Natasha now with the Georgian glass decanters. A nice condition there. A lovely hello. We are. 45, 47, and 50, and 5. 55. Okay, okay. Profit, 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 profit. Take. Yeah, take 60. Last chance and a 55. Go on. Two decanters at 55 pounds. A profit's a profit. Nice things. I like them. Just the notion of having handled them yeah. is lovely enough. Onwards with Charles's 18th century wine glass. hundred pounds. Fifty. Oh, come 50. on. 50, 50, 50, 50. Does he have 50? Oh, he has five, lovely. Five and 60. Oh, no. five. And five and 70. Excuse me, it's moving. He's thinking about it. 75. Oh, oh, like back in again. Back in. And 80. Go on. And nuns George the third glass at 80 pounds. For five. king and country, at Tasha. <laughs> We bring the toasting glass down. And at 80, all done. A small loss. It's not quite the cheers. A small loss. It's not quite the cheers, but at the same time, I loved it. Yep, a handsome thing, Hanson. You and I both know the beauty is. If you like something... And... It's the passion. That's right. Natasha's passionate about this one. The Italian 19th century bronze vase. Beautifully cast with the lizard on there, with his tail wrapped round it there. 200 I have. Oh, oh good! Oh. Nice, nice start, nice start. 40, 260, 280, 300. Oh, nice, 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 nice. 320, 340, 350 I'm bid. Oh, Charles is such a buzz. Go on, well done. 350 I can fill one more bid, I can fill it. 360, yes. 360. Oh. 380 is now out at 360 pounds then. I will sell then at 360. Yay! I'm so yes. tough! I'm so tough! Oh, I'm so pleased! Ciao bella, ciao bella! Oh, oh si si! Oh, oh, si si si! Mille grazie! Bravissimo! A stonker of a profit. Oh, I hope That's... that someone loves it. Giddy up! Charles's early 20th century rocking horse is next. 100 I'm bid, thank you. 110 I'll take. 110, 110, 120. Competitors. 120. Right. Racing commentator. Come on. 30 on commission. 140, 150, 150 160. I'm bid. 160. <laughs> At 160. Pounds. We're calling it. A fine Sold. breed. A fine breed. Sold. What a That's guy. Good. Harry Trotter romped it, Charles. <laughs> That's amazing, Rizal. I'm, I'm so pleased. That's good. Now, it's Tasha's George V silver desktop calendar. £50 and bid, and 50 and 5 and 60, 65, 70. 70. There you are! And 80 I'll take at £75. Are you kidding? And 80 anywhere. And 80 and 5, 85. Go on! All out online at 85. I'm going to sell no phone bids there at 85. All done then at 85. That's good. You are the calendar girl. You're living <laughs> in a calendar world, aren't you? Oh, another goodie, Natasha. I feel dazed and confused. I'm right, really, okay. I'm really impressed. Me too. It's Charles's Barnard Silver Poodle next. Any poodle lovers out there? Yes. Still at £100. Oh my gosh. No, they will start higher. 50. Oh. 50 pounds this could 50, be the 50, biggest 50, loss no, ever. No, 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 no. 50, I'm bid, thank you, and five. And five now I have at 55 and 60. 60 I bid, thank you, and five. I actually don't believe it, I actually don't believe it. There's a very long no. way to go. 70. Oh, thank you, Charles, oh, Charles, oh, Charles. And 80 I bid now, and five, and 90. And eight, 90 I bid. If I get 100, if I get 100, I'll be happy. Away with us now at 90 and five. Are you okay? Oh, bid on the phone as well. 95 then on the phone, 95 now, 100. Right, okay, we're back in, we're back in, we're in three figures. At 100 and no. on the phone then at 110. Charles, no. No, 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 no. No hammer. Last chance. Oh! Oh, Charles Carlos! That's 290 pounds. That's a massive deficit. 
bad doggy. Get in your basket. Do you know, I don't know what possessed me. Oh, oh that's painful, isn't it? That's really stressed me out. Wow, 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 wow. I think wow and wow and wow and wow. Quick, let's move on to Natasha's Georgian lead tobacco box. Forty pounds for the tobacco and the fish, the little fish on the top. Fish! He can't have fish! Fifty pounds I'm bid and five and five and sixty, sixty and five Watch. and seventy. Eighty pounds I'll make. At seventy pounds Go I'll on. Five, Come on. You are flying. At seventy pounds then, at seventy pounds, are you all done? At seventy pounds. I'm amazed. Natasha will sell at seventy. No, 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 no. Smoke That's amazing. <laughs> Smoking result, Tasha. <laughs> Tasha, you're amazing. You are just the ultimate tish tash. Tosh. Tosh. Drum roll! It's the final lot of the week. Charles's box of silverware. Start me off at £500. Get out of here. Go on, please, please, please. £500 I'm bid. Yes! At £500 I'm bid. £550, £550. Good lad. I can't believe it. At £550 and I'm selling it. I can't it believe it. No, you can believe it. Look at your face. You can believe it. You love it. Better pick a pocket or two. Yes. Fagin would be proud, Charles. A belter of a profit. That's good. Natasha began with £326.36. and pennies. After all auction costs, she made a profit of £179.94. And Tasha has a final total of £506.30p. Amazing. Charles started with £1,272.78. And despite making a loss of £134, Charles is bathing in road trip glory. He has a final total of £1,138.78. And all the profit goes to children in need. Well done. Right, that's all right. Oh, it doesn't matter. You gamble. I'm going left. You're going left. Um, <laughs> I like your style. Good on you. Into the sunset. Uh, here we go. Give away that. Give away. Farewell, you lovely pair. <laughs> it's been a party bus of chaos. With compliments. I love your hair, by the way. Stop it. Insults. Oh, what is that smell, by the way? Is that you? Eggs. It Thank smells you. like eggs. Evil stepmother, you've got that kind of vibe. And dreams come true. Yes! Miss you. Oh, yes! Oh, what am I going to do without my buddy? Next week on Antiques Road Trip... Roger Moore had one of these at James Bond. Really? We present Margie Cooper. Would I bar a nice young man like you? And Tim Medhurst. Hello, my name's Timmy. For the very first time together. <laughs> would you be up for camping? No, flipping well wouldn't. <laughs>